Hi everyone, I'm Vian and welcome back to the channel Without a Wire where we look at everything a smart home can throw at you. So I'm visiting my good friend Etienne, you may have seen him in one of my previous videos and we will do a walkthrough of his house today where you will see that Etienne is not the run of the mill home automator. Uh, basically none of his stuff is standard and if he can spot something that's off the shelf Leave a note in the description below so we can see if you can spot the off-the-shelf product here. But uh, you will see a lot of customization today. So let's find out a bit more about Etienne. So hi Etienne and welcome to the channel. Hey there. So uh, Etienne, tell us what made you get into the home automation game? Uh, it stemmed from a hobby, um, so a natural sort of love for electronics and all things IoT. <clears throat> started playing around with it. Um, started out with Arduinos first, played around with it a bit, and then eventually got into sort of doing stuff with Raspberry Pis, tried to do the same stuff, and over the years sort of just found different components and different approaches to try and combine. Um, and eventually sort of led into, okay, well, let's do something at home with, with all of these devices and capabilities. Um, so started building out some components manually, using components, and at some point I found it to be a bit strenuous and sort of takes a lot of time. And then I started looking at off-the-shelf products, which is great, it's convenient. However, I found it to be prohibitively, prohibitively expensive in, in most cases. The other downside to it is because you have different components from different manufacturers, you end up having to deal with quite a lot of different APIs and interaction points. It's just sort of over complicated those things. Then I decided, well, let's take it a step back. Um, because we can build this, let's try and find a way of manufacturing these devices, custom made, to sort of become a bit, a bit of a standard, which I can use, I can fully sort of manage and also fully uh, full control about how interactions are managed and facilitated with all of these different capabilities. So that eventually sort of led to a standardized platform that I put together using sort of standard APIs, found some software components, in this case uh, specifically Home Assistant to work great with all of these, these platforms. And that's how I ended up setting it up. The reason for why, I'm just lazy, I like to switch off the life after I got into the bed. So that's a bit of background about Etienne's love for home automation, electronics and software development. And while we're waiting for the fire to, to get ready for Bry, let's uh, take a look through his house and uh, take a tour. Let him explain what he did and there's some very interesting stuff that you'll find in this video today. Okay, so we are in essentially what's called Etienne's headquarters. So if you can see there's quite a lot of equipment in here and those of you who's got an expert eye please leave a note in the description below if you can spot how many raspberry pines are in this room there's quite a few so etienne what is essentially happening in this room there's a lot going on this is my workshop um, it's a bit cramped but it works uh, for now Making a few plans. Um, <clears throat> so this is essentially where I started putting together all of these different components of mine. You can see on the my right hand side there, it's my little collection of electronics, the tools. This table is where I do most of my soldering, and planning, and stuff. Uh, this laptop and screen over here is set up for all the 3D printing and CNC work for doing circuit boards that we need. Um, and this is my usual my work desk. This is where I keep myself busy during the weeks. Over the weekends, it's more about using all of the different stuff in here to create all sorts of little fun projects. Okay, so tell us what are you doing there on the screen? So this is Home Assistant, um, just displayed in a browser. So I've got Home Assistant set up to basically. Uh, manage my house from a central location. All of these different components and devices connects back into our system and from here 
Now the system will provide you with a graphical user interface where you can set up all of your automation, all of your triggers, all of your uh, funky stuff. So in this case, to give you a demo, I've got a light over here. I'll just switch on by my browser. And tell me your control unit there on, on top of the rack there. So this is one of the devices that I put together. This is still one of the early prototypes that I, that I created. Um, essentially what you see here is an ESP16, or it, sorry, ESP8266 device. Um, so this chip has a native Wi-Fi capability built into it, so you don't need to worry about all sorts of other additional requirements for um, connecting to your networks. You don't have to have network wires running around. This board up here is uh, configured to, to manage four different relays. Um, that sits in the back, you can't sit in the moment, we'll show in a bit. In addition to that, we also have a motion sensor connected to it, and there is also a temperature sensor connected to this board. And that's sort of my standard format of what I call Now, although it can deal with four relays, in this case I'm only using two at the moment. One is for this light, which is controlled by this uh, dashboard over here, the study light, and the other one is for a, oftentimes it gets a bit hot in here and I've got a fan that I got switched, that I, that I plug in, to one of these outlets here, and just connected to one of the relays, so I can switch on the fan on and off whenever I need to. Okay, so if I understand correctly, in that little motherboard which you designed yourself, if I may ask, or is that one of your, your purchased ones? So this component is purchased, this little board. Okay, okay, so this is basically some of the prototypes that Etienne uh, is playing with to create one of these boards that we just looked at, one of those. And essentially what that board gives you is four relays, a temperature and humidity sensor and a motion sensor on one board, which effectively means that there's one connection to the Wi-Fi controlling six devices uh, simultaneously. So Etienne, if we look at these components, can you walk us through as to how you put this together? Yeah, so this uh, component is what, what you purchase, it's an ESP uh, board, this is an ESP32, most of the house is running on ESP8266 uh, devices I believe. Um, what I do is, is then create my own circuit boards, so this one is uh, a work in progress, it's essentially just cutting a circuit, this is all through all components, uh, stability or the finesse for on, on board SMDB components. Um, then once it's done, basically start soldering all of your components onto the board here. This is one of a prototype. Uh, this is essentially a two board component. In this segment we only have the relays over here. This is essentially what the relays are. Uh, and with a few diodes and resistors just to sort of control the components. The spins here would essentially then connect up to our ESP device via these GPIOs um, and then through a piece of code you then manage what will switch it on and off based on event previous. Okay, and do you use your, your own firmware or do you use <coughs> factory firmware? In some cases I try to build my own firmware, um, then I came across a platform that's called ESP Home. Um, and essentially what that allows you to do is, is flash firmware onto the device and basically just use a basic configuration file to, to configure what the, the, the board will do with the different pins or different inputs. Now I found that a lot easier to deal with and manage uh, as opposed to trying to code it all out yourself and it's really uh, stable and I really like it. So ever since I discovered that, combined that with ESP Home, with Home Assistant on these devices, I found that the setup was just really much more fluent and effortless than what, I, what it was before, because, before I tried to code out all of my components itself. In some cases I do have custom pieces of code that are running on some of these devices, many of them are still prototypes, um, but for the majority of what you'll see today it's just standard ESP Home combined with a configuration file and then that's configured to talk back to the system. Okay, 
Hundred percent. So that's that's quite interesting. Let's explore another piece of technology there. Uh, I see there one of your home built little cameras, and to my understanding, this has got a tilt and rotation functionality as well. And we'll have a look at uh, one of these in more in more depth uh, in the kitchen or in, in any of the other rooms that you have. Can you talk uh, talk us through what you've you've done and how you've built that little camera for you? Mm, yes, that is there's a ESP32 camera device in there, a little component. Um, <coughs> again, using ESPO, that's flash to sort of configure and connect back to Home Assistant. Um, that's on the software and the hardware side, it's really just a vanilla component out of it, but what you see in this whole unit over here is essentially again a piece of circuit board to which the ESP32 um, device is slotted into. Within this box there's a stepper motor, um, that's a little piece of custom sort of hardware, piece of hardware again, uh, along with a, a bit of custom code that then controls the pan for this camera to the left or to the right a certain amount of degrees and that you can fully control by our uh, home assistant again. The tilt unfortunately I still need to work on, that's not done yet um, but that's a sort of phase two of this type of, of platform. Okay, can you perhaps show us what the quality of the, the camera is? <clears throat> so there we go, so <clears throat> the ESP32 board is it's a capable little piece of hardware but it's not mind blown. Um, so I had to drop the frame rate to maybe 10 frames per second to manage heat. As soon as you go above that, you sort of have to deal with all sorts of thermal issues. Um, then second also, it all communicates via your Wi-Fi network. So again, the drop in frame, will, frame rate will help just with the amount of bandwidth that you consume of your Wi-Fi so you won't slow down the rest of your devices. In general, the, the quality is quite good. Um, at 10 frames per second you sort of get a decent sort of stream that you, that you can watch and see. Um, the aspect that I got set on the camera at the moment is 800 by 600 um, and it works out quite well. So if you want to kind of twist it, this, uh, the feed is just pushing through the system, this browser is connecting to the system which allows us to pull that feed. And then if we go into cameras, this is the control that I have for tilting the camera. So if I'm going to tilt, so if we just say move to the left, there we go, tilt it. If we look at the picture, this is, you'll see that the picture will change. So there's a slight delay there, but uh, still a good enough picture quality so you can see what's going on. Okay, so this is essentially the, the snapshot view. The and side. not the streaming view. So every few seconds it takes a snapshot. The oh, one on the, the left is the streaming, right? Yeah. Okay, so let's just take a last uh, view through the room and just to give you guys a, a view of all the Raspberry Pis in here. And if you can spot them, please let me know how many you actually see in the room and leave a comment in the description below. So this is basically the control panel which Etienne created to control the entire house. So this is the main control panel. So Etienne, if you don't mind walking us through what you've got on there and the components you used. So here yeah, we've got a, a, again a Raspberry Pi 4. This specific model is the 8 gig memory model. Um, on here I've got just my normal uh, Raspbian OS running. Then a Home Assistant installed on top of this running a Docker container and the reason why I chose to do it via the Docker container and not the native home assistant installation is that I wanted to still have the GUI available, the Raspberry Pi interface. And the reason for that is so that I can attach this touch screen to this Raspberry Pi. What you see on here at the moment is basically just again a browser window um, so that I don't have so I still get to have this control panel running here with Home Assistant with only one Raspberry Pi as opposed to having a separate sort of component that I have to run to give us this ability to have this dashboard over here. This is a touch screen, everything is configured to be here. Um, so this is my normal home view with just a 
and if the weather tracks temperature down here, these temperature sensors are coming from around the house, one for the kitchen, one for the living room, one for the study. Um, let's just go back. Um, <clears throat> over here I just have quick touch buttons to just activate a few stuff and then it rolls up so if I just switch on the main light there, uh, it will switch off switch on all the main lights, which we don't want right now. It just switch that off. What's also cool is whenever something changes within the house, like for instance a light is switched on within the kitchen or the study, you will see it up here as well. Uh, so it's really a nice central way of seeing what's happening in your house and what the status is of your fingerprints. Over and above that, um, so I do have quite a few Raspberry Pis running around in the house. Um, one of the things you always have to worry about them is uh, disk space, if they, especially if they are recording logs, um, temperature. Um, if they get too warm, they start throttling, so you start losing performance. So what you see on here at the moment is a little application that I wrote that runs on the Raspberry Pis. <coughs> um, it connects via MQTT back to Home Assistant, essentially reporting its state every, every so few seconds. So in this case it sits around 10 seconds at the moment. Essentially it gives you a whole control panel of all of these. Further to that, what I also did, which you'll probably see later on, is the screens are, have, have the capability to be switched on and off. And that's really to, to conserve power. And these screens are connected up to motion sensors within a room. Um, so when you ain't exit out of a room after a certain amount of time, the screens and the lights will switch off, which includes the raspberries to save some power. Um, and then these little robot faces that you see up here is also the automation capability that it provides you with just one touch point to say I want this screen, to use an example, to, be, to, to turn on and off when I enter and leave the room for instance. If you just want to switch it on or you want to avoid it, you just basically click one of these robot buttons and that disables the automation within our system, um, which allows you to give you, it gives you more control Okay, so let's let's have a look at, at one of these screens. I'm just going to pan around to the kitchen screen, and then we will see what happens. We'll basically simulate movement there, so you can see there's a little control panel. Let's see if we can get a closer shot there, so you can see the little control panel is on because the motion sensor basically picked me up, and if you look at the motion sensor. There on top of the cupboard, you can see there's a little camera and the motion sensor there in the middle of the screen. So when that motion sensor picks up movement, it basically tells the little control panel to go on so you can see what's managed in that room. And Etienne set up a dashboard for each one of the rooms in the house. So Etienne's is going to flick the switch there at the back. So we can actually see the screen going on and off simulating movement in the kitchen. So there it's off and let's say I'm moving around in the kitchen and a sensor picks me up, it will bring up the screen automatically. And then along with that, he's got one of his custom little cameras there that even the box where that it's in is a 3D print that Etienne designed himself. So Etienne, uh, if you can talk us through what's happening in the kitchen. So <clears throat> I've got a glass ceiling in my kitchen and it tends to get quite hot. Um, and so with that I decided to build a, again a prototype box that sits up there. Uh, same principle, uh, an ESP module running connected with uh, four relays. Then again, the main motion sensor and temperature sensor. So the motion sensor I use for security. This is the only entrance into the house. So this is one of my central points where I sort of monitor for movement when I'm not around. Um, <clears throat> what I decided to do with these boxes is essentially I have those relays connected to just normal standard plug outlets. Um, and this allows you to just basically plug in your devices so you don't have to do any manipulation of wires or have to cut wires, touch the house internal wires to, to be able to reduce these capabilities. Um, <clears throat> so 
So the reason you did that is because you are renting this space and you don't want to interfere with the yeah. existing electrics, right? Yeah, yeah. Unfortunately, I don't want to touch any of that for all sorts of reasons. Um, but what's connected in this house, we still have the normal kitchen lights um, sitting up here. Um, this is a normal switch. switch. So that stays, I don't need to, to change it. What I did add here is if you look at the window over there, you see there are three sort of LED lights. <clears throat> Those ones? Yeah. Okay. Uh, so there's one down here, one down there, and one up here. Cool. So underneath your counter there is one. Yeah. There is one. And where's the third one? And that one. And so right the there. Ones? Okay. So we'll do a little demo when when it's darker tonight, so you can see the lighting yeah. properly. Okay. And then um, we have another light on the top, which is essentially serving as our main light. And what we do with this control panel is you get to control it from this control panel over here. So that control panel, you switch on the light there from the control panel. It goes on. There you go. There you go. We'll get a better shot in the evening. So you can get a full view of the experience in the kitchen with the automation that Etienne actually created for the kitchen. So this panel is here fairly for convenience so that you don't need to walk around. You could essentially also ask it to switch off and on the lights here, which will show you later. Okay, so that's, that's one of your off-the-shelf stuff, right? So again, this is a Raspberry Pi. Running over here, then we I bought to purchase a separate 3.5 inch screen that gets plugged into this. What you see up here is again just a normal Raspberry Pi operating system running. With, uh, when it starts up, it creates uh, a browser window, and that browser window is then configured to display the home system dashboard that's configured for this particular Raspberry Pi. Okay, so if I understand correctly, if you have a power failure and the power comes back on and the Raspberry Pi boots up again, it boots back up to that browser with that menu. Yes. So okay. let me show you. Let's do the demo. Okay. Let's see. Okay, so let's simulate the power failure quickly and see what it does. Right. Okay, so we switch the Raspberry Pi back on, simulating a power failure and seeing that it's booting back into a Home Assistant menu. And there you go, back in the menu where it was after the power failure. So you, didn't, you don't need to reset anything, your control panel for the kitchen or for any other room for that matter in your house yes. would be back up and running when the power gets back on. Yeah. That's really nice. Yeah. So the next step is to still design a little box, proper box for this. Okay. This is just a temporary holder, which works nice. Um, so also, the plan is to take this box and maybe print the creator box which I allocate here or sit here or maybe close to the door. Okay, also a 3D print. Yeah. Okay. Of course. Again, custom. <laughs> Let's go have a look at one of the other rooms. So while Etienne is getting ready to showcase the living room, there is one of the standard off the shelf devices that he's got running in his house along with all the other custom stuff so uh, yeah that's probably about one or four off the shelf products that uh, Etienne's got in the house so there we're just booting up the Raspberry Pi for the living room and Etienne will explain to us what that one does in a moment if you can see some of the lights here in the living room there's one behind Etienne and there is one again running off independent power because he does not want to interfere in the electrical setup for a rental space. So are you going to show us what you're doing with the Chromecast first? Let's have a look at the TV. What we have here is um, just a video player again a Raspberry Pi that runs on the Chromecast and it's and what we've got over here is, again through the home automation, I looked up my media player to my home automation. So in this case, you'll see it playing over this screen. So this is again a different dashboard that I've got set up for my living room, again, home assistant. 
So if you open up this button, okay, if you open up that button, you, you get to control your, your media player as well from here. So if we pause, press pause over there, you pause your media player. There we go, push play again. There we go, it uh, plays again. So all controlled by this now. The reason why this is quite cool is that from the kitchen, my missus, when she wants to call us or wants to allow us to come in, pauses the playback from the kitchen panel that you saw already, calls everybody to come fetch the food, go to the table and have dinner. And it's not causing any any fights in the house because uh, you and the kids are, are watching TV and she's pausing it unnecessarily for food that you may not want to eat. Well, that's not something I'm assistant can help you deal with, but it makes it easier for them because now she doesn't have to walk out of the kitchen and burn the food while she convinces us that they have to pause the TV. Okay, so part of your home assistant is so your missus can actually become lazy. Peace and quiet. Ah, oh, nice. Quiet. Okay, cool. Understood. <laughs> the, <clears throat> the same applies for Chromecast. Let's take a look at the uh, living room and what Etienne has done with the Chromecast there. So Etienne, if you can explain to us what you're doing with the home assistant for Chromecast. Yes, so Chromecast uh, also provides a bunch of APIs out of the box that actually integrates with Chromecast, uh, Home Assistant and Chromecast. Um, <clears throat> so when you set up Home Assistant, you basically um, uh, will see an option pop up, so link Chromecast, which I did. And similar to what I did with all these room panels and with my media player, Chromecast is also connected up to, to uh, these little roaming panels. So simple operations that you still get to have, you can play, pause, skip, it also shows you history of stuff that you play. Um, and also you also get to set volume up and down, so really a basic set of controls, but what's neat about this again, you can control this from anywhere within the house. Um, then you still have to have your phone from what you're casting from or your laptop, um, yep, really cool. And if you try hard enough, you can put a playlist together on here and select it from again. Okay, so Hitian, this is also the living room, but this seems to be housing something else. Can you talk us through that? Uh, yeah, so what you see up there is just my sort of internal networking. So at the top is my Wi Fi router, the second box is the fiber connect, fiber connections. Then below that is uh, sort of another representation of these boards that I designed, that I bought. So um, there's again an ESP device on there. You will see the four relays exposed there, again with the motion sensor. Um, the temperature sensor is here in the way behind the curtain. So in this case, what I have hooked up to this particular board is a fan. It usually sits up here. From time to time, we do plug in other components in there as well. Um, depending on the, what the day requires, so that sort of thing. Um, but all of these devices are also still connected to our um, home system, and of course by extension at the moment of a So if we just say a switch on the TV room fan, we'll see that that's also controlled by Okay, so you got automations running for this with your temperature and humidity sensor as well as some voice commands and the control panel on Home Assistant. Yeah, so for the moment with the weather cooling down, I've got the temperature-based uh, automation switched off. That normally is set and switch on around about 27, 28 degrees um, for certain periods of time. And then also I try to hook up the motion sensors to only switch on the fan and it detects movement when the temperature is above a certain level. Again, just to try and save some electricity. It's no use having the fan run. So we are in Etienne's bedroom at the moment. Uh, let's see what he's got going on in the bedroom. And uh, I'm talking home automation, not the other stuff. So Etienne, explain to us what you've got uh, running in the bedroom. Yes, um, <clears throat> so the bedroom is a similar approach to what we've got in the kitchen, the living room. Again, we have one of my devices fitted to the backboard here. Again, just a normal ESP board, four relays. 
So again, motion sensor and the temperature sensor at the back. Uh, with automation, um, what happens is as you enter the room, in the evenings after, let's say, 7 p.m., when it's dark enough, this motion sensor will pick you up and it will switch on a light uh, to the back here. Um, <clears throat> and that will switch off after about five minutes or so. Um, some of the products, we again have one of our little panels that's available in the bedroom. Again, it still needs a case to be fitted some way. But in essence, the same principle, just click a button, the light goes on and off. And we've got two lights. We have one on the side there, which will show it later on, and then the one at the back here. And then we also have in the big room. Um, Another one of your off the shelf devices. I cheated, yes. yes. <laughs> um, so, some of the things switch on the bedroom ambient light. There we go. Um, so again, you don't have to wave your arms around. You can maybe just ask nicely, switch the lights on and off. And the same applies for switching the lights off. Um, again, just touch the panel there. Shows us the multitude of controls that you've got. Okay, okay so throughout your house, you've got the Home Assistant controls scattered all, all over with these little Raspberry Pis and three and a half inch touchscreen monitors connected to, to your motion sensors for the uh, touch panel to activate when you when you walk in so that's one control and you've got the voice act uh, activation with with and you also probably have controls on your phone yes um, so the applications the, the mobile apps are installed on tablets mobile phones throughout the house so either links up to my wi-fi um, we'll be able to control all of these devices from the normal phone as well Okay, so you'll have the, the ability to cater for guests and all that kind of stuff as well when you have visitors over. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so how many controls do you have per room if we count quickly? So it's mobile devices, it's voice controls, it's uh, home assistant controls, no physical devices like physical switches and that kind of stuff. No, no it's all soft switches. Okay. And you can also see why I have Etienne as the electronics expert in some of my other installations. Okay, and that is Etienne's house. I uh, hope you found, found it interesting. If you have any questions about uh, the technologies or the components that Etienne used in his house, I will leave a link in the description below so that you can see where he sourced all these components and what he did. And if you have any questions about this video, you're welcome to email me. I'll leave the email in the description below as well. Wireless.homeautomation at gmail.com. And remember, wireless with three S's. So if you like this video, please give it a like and do a YouTube shuffle. Subscribe to the video and ding that bell icon so you can get notifications for future content. Thanks, Etienne, for hosting us. And thanks for walking us through your own. It's a pleasure. Hope you enjoyed it. Thank you, and see you in the next video.